Welcome to Coral Painter Essentials 8 tutorial. My name is Magdalena Proszowska. I am a digital painter, professionally working as senior concept artist from Game Dev, dedicating all my time to drawing and painting using digital media. This is the second part of Coral Painter Essentials 8 tutorial. Part 1 covered sketching process and the part 2 will be about how to apply colors. With the basic sketch complete, I want to block out simple colors that I want to use. My whole idea is to focus on complementary colors. So uh, plan is to use only blues and complementary oranges, yellows together. And I want to separate them by shadows and highlights planes. So the plan is that the all shadows will be consistently blue and everything that is hit by the sunlight will be orange-yellow. And by controlling brightness of shadows and highlights, um, I hope to achieve a value composition that will be simple but striking. Any type of portraiture requires a simple background, even a creature one. So background for me will be just a blue sky and clouds. I created a new layer to fill in the big shape of a horse first, just with LUTs, nothing more. I am using brushes from chalk, pastels and crayons category, switching between those with better defined edge or with softer edge. The point of keeping the horse on separate layer is to First of all, organize better my drawing, but also I can create a selection out of the new layer uh, so I will not uh, draw outside the shape I define right now. To define the sharp angles, I prefer to paint a little bit more and uh, push back with a razor to the shape I am looking for. To create selection from the layer, you just have to hold down button control on your keyboard and click on a preview of a layer in the layer window. This creates a mask that every brush stroke will be kept inside and I will not draw outside the shapes. I started with introducing a little bit of the darker values in general places. Something that I know will be much harder to do later when I will add highlights. So it's pretty good to plan ahead and if you know that some of the painting require a broader strokes, just do it before uh, you start uh, introducing the general details. The blue color I am painting with right now is uh, the uh, field light of a blue sky. So every surface that is directed toward the sky, I want to first of all make sure it's bluish and uh, because I have a very warm clouds coming from below, uh, all surfaces that are turned uh, downward will catch the warm light as well. I am working on the size of a picture where I can see the whole image at once. Uh, I would not zoom in for a very long time. I really want to focus on a big picture and make sure that it looks appealing and everything is consistent before I will jump into any tedious work very closely. To have a preview for even more simplified version of this picture, uh, I will open the extra window cl uh, called navigation and it's in window navigation. And this is a very small preview of the current picture that is updated every second. Uh, so I am sure that everything that I am doing, every brush strokes matters. I choose warm, very bright color and starting to add my highlights. So those areas are uh, the uh, spots that are hit by the sunlight uh, coming somewhere from the right side. And this contrast of not only value but also the color contrast will really push the form and help me define the dimension of the creature. It's very stylized type of lightning, but it's still very believable, uh, very highly inspired by golden hour light. 
Even if stylized, I still need to think about all the surfaces, which one is directed upward, which one is directed downward, uh, what type of light will they catch, is it the warm light, is it the cool light. Um, so this, all, this whole knowledge still is very useful, even if the light is stylized. My next step is to defining the darkest darks. Uh, so the dark color I am painting right now is my point uh, where I will compare everything else toward to. I will slowly start cutting the video to smaller chunks because I think the whole progress isn't really mind-blowing or game-changing. It's a lot of push and pulling the shapes and highlights and shadows and trying to really nail down the correct form so it reads well. I still want to push contrast more, so I will grab even brighter color uh, and start using it in the highlights. I would like to achieve the highlights to have a more vibrant color, so I will introduce more saturation in some spots. The color blockout so far looks okay, but I don't want to keep the rest of the picture untouched, so I will go back to my canvas layer, so the background layer, and start rendering some of those clouds. They will have same warm highlight as uh, you can see on the horse. So I'm starting with saturated uh, yellows uh, to create a gradation from the darker values to the brighter values. Still using the pastel brush because it's really great for blending the colors together. When I'm painting, I try to, as often as I can, pick colors from the color wheel instead of picking them from the canvas. Uh, and this way, I am sure that every brush stroke I am doing have a proper saturation and proper, proper hue. The edges of the colors are a little bit too harsh, so I will change the brush category to blenders. And those are brushes that allow you to blend colors together directly on the canvas uh, and not introduce a new color. The basic color for the clouds looks good, so I will return now to the layer with the horse and start uh, smudging, uh, defining the shapes and making sure everything is in correct spots. And I still did not zoom in, even if it's very, very tempting to start rendering something small like an eye or a nostrils. Um, I am really forcing myself to think about um, the whole picture and making sure that everything is correctly rendered and um, placed in correct place before I will start doing details. Using the same trick that I did in a sketching stage, I will flip the whole canvas horizontally just to identify if there are any errors, any problems that I didn't saw earlier. Even such a simple thing like the uh, intensity of the values is uh, very organized. You can notice that those whiter uh, shapes uh, in the highlights are only present on the top of the head and the nostrils, but uh, I didn't push them down the main, down the neck, uh, because I want your eye to really focus on the center uh, element of the picture, and that's the head of the horse. Um, so the contrast, intensity contrast, uh, is the thing that creates the center of the picture and I don't want to have this contrast placed everywhere, I just want to have it in the most important places. So this is roughly the um, end of the color composition. Um, from here I can really start detailing the whole picture. Uh, I have the 
uh, basic idea for the colors, the general harmony, the value composition is set in the stone. Um, and I can finally zoom in and do the cool details. For everything that comes after, please go and see part 3 of the video.